If running was easy, everyone would do it, but it's not, and it's still us that do it. Celebrate that. And there's a journey you go on when you start that involves mistakes, probably too many, learning and growing as a runner. And in this video, I'm gonna try and at least make it all a little easier to guide you through some of the mistakes I made, you're welcome, and some of the most common misconceptions in running. And if it makes your running just a little bit easier, you can thank me by subscribing to learn more. So where do we start? You know what I wish someone would have told me? Is that there is not one single session, not one single session out there that is guaranteed to make me a better runner. You know, I've spent a lot of time, a lot of time looking for sessions that will help me with this or help me with that. And what I've realized is that yes, there are some sessions that are better than others at improving your running, but being a better runner is actually nothing to do with the single sessions. You know what makes me a better runner? Consistency, turning up and getting the runs done. Three or four runs a week and actually, to a certain extent, it doesn't even really matter what runs you're doing. It could be all base, aerobic base, I'd still improve. It could be a mixture of base and tempo and speed work, I'd still improve. It's keeping yourself in the game. That's the most important thing, not one single session. So actually you need to prioritize just staying running. And if you find that you respond quite badly to hard sessions, as in you're sore for days or your legs hurt or you pick up little injuries, then stop doing them because I made my absolute biggest leap in my running when I just did all aerobic base and suddenly all of my PBs tumbled and I wasn't even working on speed. So don't be looking for unicorn sessions that are guaranteed to make you a better runner in one session they don't exist. Focus on sessions that you enjoy, you like doing, you feel like they push you, but you feel like you could continue training in the week. If you stay in the game, you're gonna improve. This one might feel a little bit odd when I say it, but just hear me out. When you start running, when you want to start running and you wanna do it consistently, my opinion is don't focus on the running. Now that sounds weird, but actually what you wanna start doing is trying to build the habit of showing up. If you're struggling with running on a Tuesday and then a Thursday and then a Saturday or whatever it is, then forget about the actual running bit for a while and focus on just being there at the right time that you want to run. Maybe put your shoes by the front door, maybe write in a journal that you're gonna run at that time on that day. But if you just focus on the habit of being there, of showing up, eventually that habit can snowball into the habit of continuously running. So on days you struggle with the motivation to actually run, why don't you just say, I'm just gonna be there, I'm gonna turn up, I'm gonna put my shoes on. Then you can decide whether you run or not, but actually you're focusing on the habit of showing up, which is far more powerful than actually the habit of running because motivation to actually run sometimes can be really hard. So if you don't think of it in those terms, you just think of it as, oh, I just need to be by the front door with my shoes on that's a habit that you can get behind and it's definitely a habit that you can continue and snowball. You can build the running in later if you need to. I think the easiest beginner habit to fall into is road running. They're convenient, they're accessible, they're often flat, though not always, and they're easy to run on. But roads only can limit you in a number of ways. Firstly, those kinds of surfaces provide the largest impact forces when running, hard on the joints, and the constant pavement pounding in the early days can lead to a small overuse injuries that can just disrupt the training consistency a bit. The kindest you can be on your joints is grass or trail. Not only does it lessen the impact forces, but all of the mini adjustments for roots or rocks or banks, etc. will strengthen all of the core stabiliser muscles that do get neglected on the road. Then add in the potential obsessions you can get trying to run the same roads in certain times. It's never healthy in the long term. Put yourself on trails and no two runs are the same, even over the same course. Depending on the weather or general time of year, it removes that dangerous habit of comparison. And finally, going up and down hills just works your muscles in different ways that roads can't. So I'm not saying switch all roads for trails, but a healthy balance makes a healthy runner. Something that I wish I knew when I was a beginner and I only realized later is that it is okay to see yourself as an inspiration to other people, even when you're a beginner and in a way, especially when you're a beginner. Take me as an example, when I started again as a beginner runner five years ago and we started the channel, I was really uncomfortable with sharing my stuff and being on the channel and I didn't really feel that my training had any value to other people. But actually, the more feedback I've had and the more I've heard from other people, I realized that actually that can be so powerful 
to other people when they're trying to start out running and even if your journey only affects one person and gets them inspired to run then it's got to be worth it so don't be afraid of sharing your journey even when you're at the very beginning stages because it can be so inspiring to other people who want to get started and don't really know how and it can also make you feel accountable you share a bit you want to keep going with your journey and your progress so for both sides of the coin it can be really inspirational and really help great progress so you are an inspiration let me promise you that let yourself be it this one's a tricky one but I would urge you to not run to solve a problem that you have in your life. It could be the fact that you're slightly overweight and you want to lose weight. It could be a mental health issue and you run for your mental health. It could be a whole number of things. But running shouldn't be about solving a problem. Running should be for running. You just do it. And guess what? The problems will solve themselves. But if you're running to specifically solve the problem, what happens if the problem doesn't get solved? That's my worry, or certainly not in the short term. What if you don't see those results that you thought you were gonna see when you started running? So better than that, do what I do and run because I know running is the right thing to do. It's the person that I want to be. And luckily for me, it puts my stress levels down. It keeps my weight level steady, but I'm not running for those things. So you just need to make sure you connect for the right reasons when you start running and everything else will be a byproduct, but it'll all be good. We want to stay in it for life, right? Honestly, I almost get sick of hearing myself say this, but I'm saying it because I still see it all of the time. Training is not about running fast or far, especially early on. There can be an addiction to seeing progress by timing yourself over the same route or distance, but take it from everyone who has been through this before you. This approach has many limitations, not least the fact you can't keep getting faster. So either you're gonna get injured or you don't beat your time. And then what happens? My message here is simple, chill, run easy, change the course, change the distance. Mary got fixated on running 5Ks when she built up to that distance, but sometimes five, sometimes four or six or three would have been great for the body and mind. It keeps it fresh and maybe allocate a day or two every couple of weeks to run faster because that will satisfy your need to feel like you're running faster and then do the rest easy. Mix it up, but keep it smart. Try to remember, it's nice to run fast, but it's nicer to be able to run. Okay, I'm gonna contradict myself in this point, but again, I'm gonna explain why I'm gonna contradict myself. And what you need to know is when you're a beginner runner, you don't need all the gear. You don't need to be that person that turns up to their first event with all the right running gear, a wicked watch, a heart rate monitor, all of those things, they're great. And I've said that in a previous video, if you wanna attach yourself to the process of running, then buy something nice because it motivates you to get out. But I guess I just wanna take the pressure off and say you don't need to. A pair of trainers will get you out of the door with some scrappy old kit. It doesn't matter, you're still running. Sure, build nice stuff up over time. That's all good, I've got loads of nice kit now, but when I started, it's just scrappy clothes. You just don't need to be that person that has to buy all the top of the range stuff if you're just starting out. But of course, as I said, you can if you want to because it does attach you a little bit more, it holds you accountable. Oh, I bought those trainers, I better put them on and get out. So it's nice to have, but you don't need to have it. Relax, run, it's all good. You're a runner regardless of what you wear. As long as you're wearing something, because then you're just, you're a streaker. Ah, something it would have been nice to know sooner rather than later in the journey is that not all opinions on running and how to run are equal. And what I mean by that is, let's be honest, we're runners. We love talking about running and everyone has an opinion on what's worked for them or how you should do it. And when you're a beginner, you can be a little bit impressionable, I guess, to people that seem so much more experienced. But as I say, not every opinion is equal because those differing experiences, even if they've worked for that particular runner, doesn't mean that they necessarily work or would work for you. So the key to it all is, if you're still trying to find your feet in running or you're further down the line, but you still want to learn a little bit more is find trusted sources, people that have positioned themselves within the running community as a go-to 
I I'd like to see this channel, but obviously this is just one of many. Lots of good channels out there with very experienced people with a lot of coaching qualifications or good backgrounds in this that can help you on your way rather than Joe Bloggs down the pub saying, you know what, I had the best progress I ever had when I run every single run I ever did at my top pace. Like that's just, he responded well. I wouldn't recommend that, I don't think many would, but you get what I'm saying. And if this video brought a smile to your face or put a little bit of knowledge in your brain, consider subscribing to the channel, but no hard sell. I just want you to understand that running is a process for life. Relax, it's all good, enjoy it. And if you liked the video, you're definitely gonna like this one, which was the original in this series, Stop Running Like a Beginner. And it's a 10 step fast track with 10 different points that helpfully make you feel relaxed and help you stay in running for life. Hope it helped. Another race video coming Wednesday, 10K this time.